People often ask questions about Christ potentially being present in other communions, right? And this is something that actually I myself struggled through. Uh, I, I was fully bought into the notion of transubstantiation well before I became Catholic. Uh, and so I really wanted it to be the case that Christ was truly present uh, in any communion that I received. Uh, I wanted that to be true. Uh, and the sad case of the matter is, is that it isn't true in every case. Uh, now, the church has a variety of kind of views on when it is and when it isn't. Uh, Eastern Orthodox, absolutely, is Christ present there. The Anglicans and Lutherans, it gets fuzzier uh, because, you know, we allow their priests to or pastors to become priests and pastors in our tradition if they convert. But it's complicated. Uh, the, the short answer and the almost cop-out answer to this question is that it has to do with apostolic succession, right? That what happens is that there's something about the priestly character and the sacrament of the priesthood, right? There are uh, three sacraments, essentially, that are said to leave an indelible mark on your soul. And those are baptism, confirmation, and holy orders. Those leave a mark on your soul that cannot be removed. They give a character, is what we say. And it's that character in holy orders that allows them to be able to consecrate the host. Right? It's not anything about the individual. Uh, Augustine took care of that for us back in the Donatist controversy, where everybody wanted to say, well, the people who gave up the holy books during the persecutions aren't real priests or bishops anymore, and therefore anybody they ordained isn't a real priest or bishop anymore. And Augustine says no. And the church ultimately said no. Right? That, that doesn't matter. The, the character in our normal sense of that word, that is the kind of person that is celebrating the sacraments, at the end of the day doesn't really matter. The sacraments work kind of on their own because God chooses to work through us. So, what we can say with certainty is that God has chosen to work through his priests, who themselves were ordained by their bishops, who can find their succession in the apostles. And apostolic succession is the way that we kind of guarantee or ensure that we are continuing the faith of the apostles. And so because of that, and because of this character that is given to them by virtue of this sacrament, we can say with confidence that so long as they follow the appropriate form, when they consecrate the host, it is truly consecrated and becomes the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. We can't say that of traditions that don't have apostolic succession. So we can't say that Christ is truly present when they celebrate communion, even if the form of that, it could look, you could go to a non-denominational church like I grew up in, and if you were a really Catholic-minded preacher, you might just do all the forms and exactly, you could say all of the same words, but that wouldn't guarantee that it's going to be the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ, because these aren't magic words. Right? We're not performing magic when we do this. God is working through individuals he has chosen to work through. And we know that he's chosen to work through his priests and bishops. We essentially don't know and can remain somewhat agnostic, but agnostic to the point of saying, therefore, it isn't, so far as we're concerned, about communion in other traditions. The Eucharist is often a, a, a dividing factor amongst non-Catholic Christians and Catholic Christians. Uh, and in fact, before I became Catholic, uh, some very close friends who are now the godparents to my, my children, uh, they became Catholic while we knew them. And that was a real touchy point for me was that you know, I told them, I feel like you've separated yourselves from us, that you're saying you're real Christians and we're not by virtue of this separation and that we cannot commune with one another. We cannot come to communion, right, with one another. Um, and, you know, they didn't 
nobody really has an answer to that to a certain extent. That was how I felt at the time. That's not a, an argument to be overcome in that kind of way. Um, what I would say to someone who's feeling that tension, whether it's a Catholic who's feeling that tension just kind of on their own part, that they feel like they've separated themselves off from their Protestant brothers and sisters, or a, a Protestant Christian who feels like their Catholic friends and family have pulled themselves away is to say that it's it's not as simple as that. Uh, and it's certainly not the case that we're just declaring ourselves better and you're worse than us. That's why you can't have communion with us, right? That's why you can't receive the Eucharist with us because we're better than you. That's not what's going on there. The issue has to do with what we think is actually going on in the Eucharist. Right, that we firmly believe that Christ truly is made present when this happens. That in some way we are consuming the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ when we receive the Eucharist. And the fact of the matter is, is that most Protestant traditions do not believe that. Most of them have uh, really fallen into, I mean, you get a few different camps uh, of what's going on in the Eucharist from a Protestant perspective, but uh, many of them fall either in what's called like the Calvinist camp or the Zwinglian camp. Calvin said that Christ is spiritually present, but not actually. And Zwingli said it was a memorial, that we are to remember what Christ did the night before he was crucified. Uh, and so... From those perspectives, right, it wouldn't, it, thinking through it, it wouldn't make sense if you didn't think that Christ was truly present in this for you to receive something that you essentially think we're all deluded about or are potentially even lying about. Um, although I think more often than not, it's just you think we're wrong, right? Why, why would you want to receive something that we're telling you is X, right, is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ when you didn't believe that. But it's also on our part that we want to make sure that you are kind of affirmed in what you actually believe, right, that you don't think this is the case. And so it makes sense for us to keep that distinction, right, to say we think different things about this particular thing, right, about what's happening in the Eucharist. We think different. But that doesn't mean that we can't come together on all sorts of other things. It doesn't mean we can't pray together. It doesn't mean we can't sing together. It doesn't mean we can't do what Catholics like to call the corporal works of mercy together. Right? It doesn't mean we can't go serve the poor and feed the hungry together. It doesn't mean that in a way we can't worship Jesus together. It just means that this thing, which is, yes, admittedly very central to us as Catholics, we can't share that part together in the sense that we can't both receive it together. But it's, it's more about simply us stating something about what we firmly believe is happening here and trying to respect what you firmly believe is happening there. Right? So it, we need to think of it less as a, a dividing line, right? That is splitting people off in one side or the other and more as, a, yes, a point of contrast but one that also still allows us to highlight and illuminate all of the points of connection, right? That whatever we think is happening in the Eucharist, we all think Christ lived, was truly the Son of God and truly man, lived, performed miracles, died to redeem us of our sins, and was raised from the dead so that we can have eternal life. And that's a lot of shared ground right there that we can have without having to kind of get frustrated with one another about the fact that if I come to your church uh, one Sunday, that I'm not going to receive communion while I'm there, and that when you come to mine, you're not going to receive it with me. That we still have a communion with one another in Christ, even though we don't share in the Eucharist together. <laughs>